we're going to take a look at how to find the distance between two points. This question asks us to find the distance between 9, 2, which will be our point right here, and 3, 7, which we can see they also put on the graph for us. Round to the nearest hundredth if necessary. Okay, so the shortest distance, or when they say find the distance, they mean the straight line between those two points. Now notice they drew in a right triangle. The reason for that is an easy way to find the distance, and I'm gonna label the distance, or D, as this segment here between those two points. Notice the distance would be the hypotenuse of the right triangle they drew in to connect those two points. Now they drew the triangle in because it makes it an easier way for us to figure out the distance if we use our Pythagorean theorem. And actually, what we're gonna see, the distance formula comes from the, Pyrag the Pythagorean theorem. So, if I take a look at my graph, I can see that the units are all going by one on both the x and y axis. So I can count those boxes to figure out the lengths of my side legs. Now notice, I can do that for the legs because they're straight on the side of the box. The hypotenuse, I can't do that because it's kind of going through those lines. Okay, so from here, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six units across. Now, that should make sense because I'm going from my x value of three to my x value of nine right? Nine minus three gives me six. But you can either subtract or you can count those boxes across. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my vertical distance or my change in the y value. From my, my point down here at nine, two to the one up here, I can count up one, two, three, four, five boxes or units. Or I could look at my numbers and say I went up from two to seven. So seven minus two means I went up five units. And then remember, when we're looking at a right triangle, the two sides that make up the right angle are the legs of the triangle, and the other side, the longest side across from our 90 degree angle is the hypotenuse. So the distance that we're trying to find is the hypotenuse of our triangle. So if I use the Pythagorean theorem here, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And now you can call it c squared since that's what's in the Pythagorean theorem. You can call it d squared for distance. Remember, it doesn't really matter what letter you use. Okay, so one of my legs, let's say I've used the, six, the leg of six first, six squared, I'm going to put that in place of a, plus my other leg, this can be our our five squared is gonna be equal to the hypotenuse squared, which is also our distance. So let's call that D squared, so we keep track of that and remember that it stands for distance. Okay, and then when I square my numbers, I'm multiplying them by themselves. I have to do the exponents before I can add. So six squared, or six times six, gives me 36. And five squared, or five times five, gives me 25. Okay, my next step is to simply add those together. 36 plus 25, that gives me 61. And remember, I want d by itself. So if right now it's d squared, my opposite or inverse is to take the square root. Okay, now this did not come out evenly because 61 is not a perfect square. It said to round to the nearest hundredth if necessary. So I'm going to start with, I have 8.1, I'm sorry, 7.810, and then it keeps going from there. I'll put dot, dot, dot is equal to here. That cancels out and gives me D. 
Now, when we go to round this, the hundredths place, we said round to the nearest hundredth, is two decimal places. Since there's a zero after that, I would drop off the zero and say, okay, it rounds to 7.81 units. We're gonna find the distance between the point 10.7 and the point 3.10. We can see that they drew those points on the graph for us, and they connected them with a right triangle. So just like last time, we know the distance is gonna be the hypotenuse of that right triangle, and the legs, we can either count how many boxes we see on each side, or we can use our coordinates. So on the top here, I would count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven boxes. So that would be seven units. Now notice I was counting from left to right. So that means my X value should be seven apart. And they are, right? I went from three to 10. So 10 minus three gives me a distance or a length of seven. On the other side, if I count my boxes, one, two, three, and again, that makes sense because I went from seven to 10 on the Y coordinate or on the Y axis. Okay, so we know we're gonna be setting this up using our Pythagorean theorem, which means we're gonna square the two legs, which in this case are seven and three, and we're gonna set them equal to the distance squared. So we're basically thinking Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, And then we're gonna plug our numbers in. So it doesn't matter which of the legs I call A, I'm just gonna call one of them A and the other B. So let's say I put seven in place of A, that means I'm gonna to have to put three in place of B. And C squared I don't know, it is my distance squared, so let's call it distance, D for distance. Okay, seven squared or seven times seven gives me 49. 3 squared, or 3 times 3, gives me 9. And when I add that together, 49 plus 9 gives me 58. So 58 is equal to my distance squared. Since the square and the square root are opposite, I'm gonna take the square root of both sides because I want D by itself. Over here that cancels and leaves me with D. Now 58 is not a perfect square, so I'm gonna put that in my calculator. What is the square root of 58? And it gives me 7.615 and then it keeps going from there. So let's start with 7.615 because they told me to round to the nearest hundredth, which is two decimal places. So I've got 7.61, and then I have to look at that next number. Remember, if it's five or higher, that one would round up to a two. If it was anything lower than five, it would stay a one. In this case, it's a five, so I'm gonna round that up to 7.6, and the one rounds up to a two. Find the distance between 9.10 and 7.2. Okay, we can see that they plotted those two points for us. And just like before, you can either count how many units you have on the side that's going straight left to right and straight up and down, or our legs of the triangle. I can see the top leg here is two boxes across, or two units. And this one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the distance is the distance between these two points or the hypotenuse of my triangle, which is D. So when I set this up, I can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse, which is also the distance between those two points. And it doesn't matter which leg I call A or B, let's say I call it A8, that's gonna be eight squared plus in place of B, I would put two. And you can use 
any letter you want. I'm going to call it D for distance. 8 squared or 8 times 8 gives me 64. 2 squared or 2 times 2 gives me 4. And now I'm ready to add those together. 64 plus 4 gives me 68. And then to get D by itself, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Square and square root cancel, leaving me with D. And on the other side, since 68 is not a perfect square, let's take our calculator, the square root of 68. And that's going to be 8.246. And then it keeps going, but that's going to be enough for me to round it. Since we're rounding to the nearest hundredth, I want to round to two decimal places. Now notice, after my second place, I have a six, so that four is going to round up to a five. So I'm going to round this to 8.25. And of course, my answer is in units.